Is your Surface device not working the way you expect it to? AJ here, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you my top five troubleshooting tips for the Surface device range. What I'm gonna show you is gonna work from the Surface 3 onwards. So whether you have a Surface Pro, a Go, a laptop, a book, or even a Surface Studio, these tips are gonna be handy for you. Of course, if you find these tips useful, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help support the channel. With that being said, let's jump into this. So the first tip I wanna give you is to make sure that your computer is up to date. Because a lot of times if your computer feels like it's lagging or it's not running the way it's expected to, it's because it's probably waiting to push through a whole bunch of updates. To update your Windows 10 PC is really quite simple. You just wanna go into the start button and start typing in the word update and it's gonna find the option of check for updates. We're simply gonna go on the option of check for updates and this is gonna take us into the settings and then you've got a few different options here. The first one I recommend is selecting on the button here that says check for updates. This is gonna do a quick internet search, so make sure you're connected to the web, and this is gonna see what updates you have pending for your PC. Some updates just install in the background and they won't affect the performance of your computer, but I always recommend hitting the restart button after your computer's done installing and downloading the updates to make sure that they're fully installed and there's nothing lagging in the background. So you can see here that my computer is running an update that was released early this month. It's gonna download and then it's gonna hit install. Underneath that, I have an optional quality update available, which I can choose to download or not. I always recommend hitting the download button because the more updates you have on your computer usually means the better your computer is gonna perform. The second troubleshooting step I'd recommend, and something that is actually just a really good habit to get into, is going down to the start button, hitting the power option, and then just simply either shutting down or restarting your computer. So when you restart or shut down your computer, it really does two good things for it. It lets those updates finish finalizing their installation on your PC. And because your computer is running for days or weeks without being turned off a lot of the time, it stores up all this stuff in its cache or in its memory. So when you do a restart, it really just lets the computer wipe all this random stuff that it has stored inside of its RAM and it means your computer is gonna perform better because it's finished installing your updates and it's not holding on to all these random bits of information that may be slowing down some of the processes. So once my computer is done downloading and installing these updates, I can guarantee that I'm gonna do a restart on it. The third tip I'm gonna give you is to run the Surface Diagnostic Toolkit. If you don't have it already installed on your Surface device, it's really quite simple to get and it's free. You simply wanna go over to the Microsoft Store. In the top right hand corner, hit search and just type in Diagnostic Toolkit. So you can see here, we have the Surface Diagnostic Toolkit. We're just gonna open that up. It's a free download. It's a very small package, so it'll install in your computer quite quickly, and then you can start running it. Cool, before I hit launch, I just wanna tell you a little bit about the Surface Diagnostic Toolkit. As it says here, it's for the Surface 3 devices and newer, and it is a part educator, part detective, and part doctor. Basically, what it does is it looks for software and hardware issues with your PC, and then it gives you suggestions on how to fix them. So we're simply gonna hit launch on the Diagnostic Toolkit. Windows is gonna ask you if you trust the program, so we're gonna say yes, because it is a Microsoft program, not a third-party accessory. It's gonna take over your entire screen. You're gonna go through the software licensing agreement first. If you agree with everything that is here, simply hit accept, and then it's gonna say, let's get started. So you have the option of telling it a bit about the problems you're experiencing first, and here we could say something like display, not responding to touch, or whatever your issue may be. The first thing that it's gonna do, which we've already done, is check for updates, because making sure your computer is fully up to date and those updates are installed, usually fixes 90% of problems with computers out there. You can see here, because we've already updated the computer before the diagnostic toolkit ran, it says your surface is up to date, so we're just gonna go continue. Now it's gonna ask you if you wanna go into a system repair. So this can take a couple of minutes while it searches your software and your hardware for any potential issues. So you can choose to skip this, but if your computer is running into problems, I would suggest hitting fix, and this will allow it to go through and check your entire computer from the applications to the software, the hardware, the firmware, and basically everything inside of your computer. My computer has no issues with it, so it ran through that really quite quickly. And you can see here what it looked at was the components in the store. It it restored the system health, and it also looked at the file corruption system. All of those on this PC were good, but if your computer had any issues, it would pop up with an X instead of a tick, and it would pop up with some tips on how to fix that issue. But sometimes your computer can still pass these three tests, but still be having issues, which is where you can actually press continue to proceed to more tests and more tools. So we're gonna hit continue and see what it does next. 
Next, it wants to test this, the power supply and the battery. So what it wants us to do is detach the screen of the Surface Book by pressing the detach button. I know mine is working, so I am actually gonna skip this down the bottom. So you can see here we can hit continue and it's gonna run you through a few more steps. Down the bottom, you can choose to test and test again, or you can simply skip one or skip several steps. This one here, I don't wanna test, so I'm just gonna hit skip. And it's got the little progress down the bar. So we've gone through one of the tests. You can see the little blue bar down the bottom here. I'm gonna skip one more time. Now it's gonna ask you to plug it into the power supply because it's gonna check if there's any fault happening there. Next, it's gonna test for touch coverage. So let's have a look at this one here. We're actually just gonna open this up and it's gonna ask you with your finger to draw around the spiral curve here. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is where it understands if it is missing any of your touch input or if there's any lag there. So you can erase or you can go done if you wanna move on to the next step. Now it's gonna test for that touch coverage again. It's gonna ask you if you're able to trace a spiral. Yes, we were, even though it wasn't perfect. Now it's gonna ask you to touch the screen with multiple fingers at a time. So if I press one, it's gonna to touch one detection. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna let go because all 10 points of touch have been detected. So were all points of touch detected? Yes, yes it was. Now it's gonna ask us to not touch the screen for five seconds. It's gonna look for phantom touches and we're gonna go next. So it's gonna ask us not touch the screen because one of the most common issues with the earlier models was those phantom touches where it felt like something was pressing on the screen. So this is gonna look for any of those phantom touches. Next, it's gonna be testing the brightness of the screen, which we can skip the speakers where it's gonna play some volume for you. Again, we're gonna skip the microphone, the wireless memory, the storage, the RAM. So it's a very comprehensive test within this diagnostic toolkit. And if it ever finds any issues, it's gonna pop up and it's gonna give you troubleshooting steps to fix those current issues. And then you can of course look at the results by simply selecting on this option here for click for your results. And it shows you everything that was passed and what tests weren't run. And if there were any issues, it would show you what failed. And then from there, if we X out of that, we can simply say whether the troubleshooting steps solved, didn't solve, or if we don't know that they solved the problem. So tip number three is running the entire Microsoft Surface Diagnostic Toolkit. It's a very comprehensive test of your device from the software, the hardware, the firmware, and the operating system. So if you're having any issues, I'd recommend running this diagnostic toolkit for sure. The fourth tip is how to manually download and install the firmware and the driver updates for your Surface device. Now being a Surface device, these should automatically be pushed through by the Microsoft Windows update, but if for whatever reason you don't trust or it's not installing properly, you can actually go over to the Microsoft website and you can find your Surface device here and download the drivers right for your PC. I'll put a link to this page here in the description down below because these are the top 10 most popular driver downloads from Microsoft. All you have to do is go and find your computer here. If it's not here, you can simply use the search option and type in your computer name and bring that computer up. When you find the right drivers for your computer, it's gonna take you to this page here where you simply hit download and it's gonna download those drivers. If you have an older device and there's been a number of different driver and firmware updates that have been pushed out, I'll show you what that looks like here on the Surface Pro 6. When you hit download, a dialog box is actually gonna open up and you're gonna have a few different options of picking the right drivers for your operating system. These three options here can be a little bit confusing for you to understand. So what I'll do is I'll pause it there and I'll put up a slide and that's gonna show you the naming convention to help you pick the right file for your computer. Once those files are downloaded, simply go into the downloads folder on your computer and run the installation package. The last tip I wanna give you is how to do a hard reset on your Surface device. Think of a hard reset as taking the battery out of your computer and then putting it back in. It takes all power out of it and then it allows it to start again really fresh. To do a hard reset on a Surface tablet like a Surface Pro, a Go, a Book, or even a Surface Studio, you wanna press the power and the volume up button for at least 30 seconds until you see the Windows logo flash on your device. When you see the Windows logo flash on your device, you wanna release the volume up button, but keep pressing the power button until it goes into the UFI or you see a white screen with some big writing. On the left side of that screen, you will get a few different options and down the bottom, one of them is exit. You simply wanna hit the exit option and then restart. And that is doing a hard reset on your Surface tablet. But what if you had something like a Surface laptop? 
On a Surface laptop, the premise is the exact same, except you're pressing the power button and the volume key instead of the volume up button. And you're gonna hold both of these together. So it's gonna force a shutdown on this computer. When I see that Windows logo appear, I take my finger off the F4 or the volume up key. I keep holding the power button and then the UFI is gonna appear. Down the bottom, I'm gonna hit the exit option and then I'm gonna simply hit restart and that is doing a power cycle on your Surface laptop. And there you have it. Those are my top five tips for troubleshooting your Surface devices. If you found these tips helpful, let me know by leaving a comment down below. And of course, if you wanna support the channel, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.